studio. Good evening, viewers. Welcome to the Face Off Friday night. Uh, second first of the year. I think it is uh, the second one of the year. Yeah, we did one last Friday. And uh, I have a full table. Uh, some of them coming in for the first time in the year. And Imam Kasozi uh, joining the table. Welcome, Imam. Thank you. Uh, one of those places where people say it as they think it is. Uh, a friend of mine, a professor, told me the other day that even when you purport to say the truth, we realize that there is so much truth that you actually know that you never say. And uh, Charles, you've been accused of rumor mongering. They say Charles uh, reveals a lot more that has been said in the corridors on the show than the rest of you say. And Charles, that is rumor mong that things said off the set, you come on the set and say, Welcome, gentlemen. And uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Peter. Welcome, Mary. Thank you. And uh, Morrison, Morrison Raka Kamba, Mary Mutesi, Imam Kasozi, and Charles Romshana. The Almighty God is great. Right. Uh, viewers, I have uh, two things that I thought we should discuss. I have an inclination to do only one of them, and that is why I asked Imam Kasozi on the set. We have had murders, assassinations, killings, uh, call them what you will, and specifically some of them have stood out because they have been of prominent Muslim clerics. Charles Romshana here has said that these deaths have got ranks. When you kill an ordinary one like me, it will be, yes, it's gone. But if it is a sheikh, then it gets particular profile. He says there are killings that are happening. Imam, I'll start with you. What I saw you actually, and uh, my teacher, Dr. Abbas Kiimba, addressing the press, at which you disagreed with uh, Andrew Felix Kawes. He arrived late, though. He should have stopped the press conference, I'm told, but uh, by the time he arrived, you had finished. Either he arrived late or you went in too early, one of the two. Uh, if he arrived late, it is unfortunate. If you went too early, you need to explain that. But the police has made statements about these deaths. You have deferred with the police. What do you know that this country doesn't know? Imam Kasozi, the person, and the Muslim community. Uganda Young Muslim Youth Assembly? Yes, Uganda Muslim Youth Assembly. Youth Assembly. Mm. Because Dr. Abbas Chimba still heads it in spite of being older than me and I've graduated from the youth. No, Uganda Muslim Assembly is not uh, just a youth organization, you know it. Uganda Muslim Assembly has a relationship with the World Assembly of Muslim Youth. Actually, its foundation is related to that. And if you go, if you see the World Assembly of Muslim Youth, it is managed by people with knowledge to help guide the youth. You see, the youth are part of the process program. So the programs are not necessarily that are for youth. And according to Islam, youth is not about age. It's the youthfulness in you that you can provide society to understand. Therefore, I'll come back to the issues of the youth. Imam, what do you know that the police doesn't know? Because you have objected to the statements of the Inspector General of Police. He camped in uh, Mayuge when there were killings there. Before he, of course, a friend of mine says he saw him jogging in Muyenga, even when he said he wouldn't uh, move a foot from Mayuge. But uh, th that's a lighter one. When he says we will leave no stone unturned, and then he tells us this is the ADF. They've killed sheikhs, some of them that cooperated with government, and then he gives us all the indicators. Then you people come and say, no, this is not so. That means you have information. Please share. No, you see, I may not have information, but at my level of education and understanding, if you come with a blanket statement, I have to stand up and say no. I, I make analysis of your statement, because I was present when Kaihura, the IGP, made this statement in Chile, mm. uh, when we were praying for the late uh, Mustafa mm. Higa. And uh, to me, he, be, he was more reactionary to the, what people had said than uh, thinking critical. And then he said, in a few of the statements made here, how do I power out on them? Let me give 
a blanket statement, and therefore it is that that compels me as a Muslim, as a person who has been here for over time, to come and say, uh huh, don't just say, that is suspicion, that is just speculation, that is a theory, and that's why we call it Kaihura's theory, of which was more to what they don't want here when we called it that it was street talk. You see, a, a theory, because you know, if anybody who has been in school knows what a theory is, a theory is a statement made, it may not be true, okay? It, it needs further research and then when it becomes to, to, into a law, then they say they agreed with it. So what shocked me, and I did not let him leave Chibuli before I went to him and talked to him in person. I told him, IGP, you have done two things for me today. One, to tell me who is killing the Muslims, which I don't agree with. Two, uh, to tell me that you have done a lot to bring all the Kampala and the Chibuli closer to each other. And uh, when you know that they are not even closer to each other, they are not closer to each other. Uh, it seems you are looking for political capital out of this. And you keep uh, thinking, actually, the problem I find in this country, many people still take Muslims for granted of the 40s, of the 30s, of the 50s, when uh, they were no educated, they were not educated enough. You start independence, mm. you only had two Muslim graduates, only two. And by the time Idi Amin came to power, maybe there were about 30 or so. But today, we have thousands of the tens of thousands around. And therefore, uh, why do we disagree? Did, did ADA, when did it, I asked this question which I want people to answer. When was ADF formed? 19, maybe 19. We are told about it in 1996 mm. or 1997. In the mid-90s. That, that, that was the time. Uh, why is it that then, when it was operating within the borders of Uganda, it had a force fighting directly. You know, Kazini, the late Kazini, camped in Renzori for so many months, mm. counteracting this. And I have information that he talked to somebody and said, of the forces we have counteracted, we have not found a more resistant force like the ADF. The reason maybe is because of the reasons behind uh, their thinking and mentality of fighting, why they went to fight. So I am asking, if ADF had killed Muslims mm -hmm. in 1980, 97, up, maybe I would, I, I would have reason. I know many people will say that the Muslims, the differences in the Muslim community, mm. the Muslims have been here and they have had those differences, some doctrinal, others leadership quarrels. Mm. You can call them political leadership struggles. Because, for example, the one between he, Ka, uh, Kayongo and Sheikh Mbaje is, is just uh, political. It's just leadership, struggle for leadership, which actually also emerged out of a set of some property. And some people want also to confuse this. There has been a lot of property in this country which belonged to the Muslims, and much of it disappeared, and there was no shooting at each other, there was no killing. So somebody, the reason why I'm asking, why did he rush to this? When he knows, because he said, mm. if I can quote, uh, for Bahiga, I don't know who has killed him, but for sure and certain, I am sure, Sheikh Abdul Karim sent him, was killed by ADF, and then asked him, why have after two and two years and eight months why haven't you come up and stated it you you are only using it now to cool down the tempers of the community that is stirred up the unfortunate part mm. in all this very briefly now yes mm. is that many of the muslim people have been hoodwinked and they are they are confusing them because many don't sit down and analyze Ever since they shot Bahiga, I have not spoken. I, and people were asking, the pressmen were all over me. And I told them, no. Even when I was at Africa, I did not make any statement. Because they asked me, what are you saying? I said, my boss cannot talk, and I talk. That is indiscipline. You see, my, Professor Bass is my chairman. My chairman cannot speak, and because I am there, and you think, so the, the problem, the other thing, what the clues we get, if we had come to state, what we had. Why then did, for example, you said the, the police, I should explain why. Did we start early? No. 
I don't. I sent a message to one of your editors of WBS inviting them to this. I told them it is 10. And many of the newsmen asked me, is it 10? I said, yes, it is 10. And when 10 came, the meetings, the, 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 press, the, the press conference started. And the so police that was to stop you by the, at, by 11. The, at Towards 11. <laughs> and the, actually they found me outside. They, they, they came saying that you, you are going to address the press conference. I said, no, I am not the one going to address the press conference. I am here to, 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 to be closer to my chairman and facilitate certain things because I have I come here to, to, to hire the place. I have to organize some small refreshments for the people who come here. That's all. So the reason is now, you said, did you, we, we beat them technically because we did it in our time. They don't know time. And uh, okay, that's I'll deal with that. Uh, Morrison, yes. is the state failing on its social responsibility to protect Ugandans and therefore the... I think you're going to ask the hard one. Which one? Is the state killing? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> no, we'll get to that as well. Be because uh, if uh, those that are killed, like Jeno Kaihura has said, that those that have cooperated with the state against the ADF have been killed, there is of course the other question. What has the state done to those that have refused to cooperate? Have they also decimated them? I don't know. But is the state failing in its job to protect these Ugandans and therefore it has run to the populist explanations? Today mm -hmm. in Paris, the police stood aback after the attack on the terrorists that uh, yesterday hit the cartoonists. The police stood aback after they'd been killed. It is the mayor of Paris that came to the press conference. I was following and I was saying, where is the police? This is the moment for the guys in Pips to come and pop their champagne and say, we've done it. I raised it the other day and you... They, they stood aback. No, I need to say that, uh, of course, Uganda and Paris uh, have got different models of administration. And as a country, certainly we are not copycats. But I need to mention that uh, it's very unfortunate uh, that we have got leaders, Muslim leaders and, and other Ugandans uh, who are you know, being killed through various uh, acts of criminality. And I need to state that uh, I join others to really send the uh, condolences. My only perspective, uh, honestly, about um, Islam is that uh, Islam is a religion of peace. And uh, truly, like uh, what Imam Kassos says, I think Ugandan Muslim community uh, has been a very, very peaceful, uh, very, very peaceful, you know, religion and people doing their own businesses. And of course, uh, as you know, when NRM came to power, it came in as uh, a non-partisan, you know, organization uh, that never believed in uh, any religious related sectarianism. So therefore, whether you are Protestant, whether you are uh, Catholic, whether you are Orthodox, whether you are a Muslim, you are first of all treated as a citizen of Uganda, and you must enjoy uh, all, full, all full rights uh, of citizenship. So where there have been acts of criminality, um, it is the business of the police to really investigate them and make sure that those who are responsible uh, are brought to book. And one of the roles of the police, like I mentioned, which is uh, investigative, uh, if the head of the police came up to say that he has leads uh, towards, uh, you know, um, he has leads to what is causing, you know, the killings uh, of different Muslim leaders. Uh, well, he didn't say, I'm not sure he said uh, that it, it's, a, it's a conclusive lead. Uh, it's a hypothesis. Even when you're starting, when you say if, the even sad. when... Even when you, even when you are starting an investigation, there are certain you know uh, parameters uh, that you know you look at the extent of the threat, what could be the motivations of the threat, like um, uh, uh, Kasozi Imam say, like Imam Kasozi says, is it the properties, is it the contradictions that have been happening and struggle for leadership, uh, is it. Um, an external force that is related to, you know, other links that would want to cause divisions and cause death in order to, to create a problem. Is it uh, the ADF uh, that formulated its ideology around the re around religion and, and sought to recruit and use indoctrination uh, and other methods in order to to radicalize? So all of those, for me, um, parameters uh, must be must be measured. But what I want to assure viewers 
uh, and those who are listening and, and viewing is that the state of Uganda, uh, the government of Uganda, uh, is competent and it is committed to make sure that uh, it secures life of every citizen of Uganda, whichever region you belong to, uh, secure property. And one of the points in the 10-point program was to make sure that this country uh, will restore, really, uh, we, we really restore and value, and value life. Hold there, hold yes, there. Yes. You see, a lot of what you say is, for want of a better word, very rhetoric statements of state. I need to interrogate some of them. Number one, the state in Uganda has told us they have decimated, cleared ADF. At various points, they come and say it is normal. Then when we get any form of attack, suddenly there is a resurrection of this ADF. And this seems like character. In 2005, a one Dominic Nguyen was mm -hmm. killed. And we were never told on which third day he resurrected. No, let me tell you. That resurrection, no, no, while no. not communicated, several years later, Dominic Nguyen hands himself over to uh, Saleka rebels and finally to the Americans. There are very many theories. Yes, on that. but whichever way, the Dominic Nguyen resurrected. No, no, no. What, what was clear the same, same which you are, you which I think, ADF. which I think, so which I think, you are, which, which I think you are misrepresenting, is that nobody has ever said uh, that LRA or ADF was decimated, but we only said that they were defeated. So, so those are very different. So even when you defeat an enemy. There is a word called remnants. Remnants remain and they scatter. Sometimes they try to regroup, but you have diminished their capability to cause what you would call uh, harm of certain proportions that is equivalent this to. This diminished force and, and the diminished is force recruiting a diminished at mosques. Because hold no, no, listen. The I need to tell you. of police talks to mm -hmm. the Muslim community mm -hmm. in Chibuli mm -hmm. and says that the ADF is recruiting at mosques. Which mosques? One was William Street. Mm -hmm. uh, that was specific. But, but, but and, and I'm thinking, okay, they come and recruit at a mosque, and you are aware of this recruitment, and you allow it to degenerate no, 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 no. to this level. Nobody can accept uh, recruitment, but I only needed to mention that even when a force is diminished and it is scattered, it is always planning you know, to regroup. Uh, it is planning uh, and to, to cause terror and, and, and these cowardly acts you know, of killing people. So all of those scenarios can absolutely happen, but it's the law, I can, and I can assure you and the, the, the country that uh, we have got huge intelligence capabilities that even span uh, beyond the borders of Uganda, and that any threat, whether it is from ADF, uh, whether it is from other forces uh, uh, that are against Uganda, we have got as a country capability uh, to defeat them. Mary, this intelligence capability that Boris <coughs> talks about, <coughs> that has not delivered to us who touched people in Kanungu, who touched children in Budo, who has committed the Butaimba murders. There are some parents who threw their children. And uh, subsequently, now they are <coughs> killing sheikhs. Can we therefore assert that actually, in spite of its beautiful quality, they have acquiesced themselves to not helping Ugandans? Is it a deliberate move not to deliver us? Because I want to believe they are as competent as uh, Morrison says. If they have possessed that competence, it must be a conspiracy against Uganda. No, no, no. They, are best, they, they haven't they, given just, us just the can, can I quip in a bit? They, they are biggest intelligence. And you can't quip in before she just even a second. No, she, she said yes. <laughs> like Mossad. <laughs> You know, you have Mossad, you have CIA, but what, what is happening in Israel, what is happening in the, in the United States? So they are, there is a difference between acts of criminality that are segregated and isolated and the capacity of the state. That's just what I wanted to say. Mary. Yes, Peter. Mm. Well, um, uh, first of all, I'm one of those people who have very uh, high respect and full confidence in uh, our security as a country. Uh, we've, uh, I think, at the regional level, at the continental level, uh, high scores uh, of our security uh, as a country. And uh, the security forces, the police force, 
and uh, everybody. We, we've registered a very tremendous uh, result in securing the lives and the property of Ugandans. I'm waiting for you to get to the meet. Um, You're starting where Morrison started. That, yes. that still sounds rosy. I no, want no, no, uh, no. to get to the greet. Uh, uh, and also the other statement I want to make, that definitely uh, the, the universal principle and the foundations of every religion is actually peace and it's uh, securing the lives of its people. But however, doctrines of religions are prone to extremists whom mm. we cannot rule out. Sometimes they go to the extreme of the holy books and use them for their personal uh, 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 selfish gains. We cannot conclude and say uh, the, the, the whatever is happening to uh, the Muslims and uh, the, the, the killings here and there is, uh, is something that's intended. And maybe uh, to say that the security forces are conniving against Ugandans. And uh, that's why I say that I think they've done so well in uh, uh, fulfilling their mandate that they are established to do. What is happening now, uh, I don't want much so much uh, to speak about it because I'm not in the, uh, the, the, the security forces, but I think um, even when it comes to, 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 to the worst, uh, our forces have full capacity to contain. Now, the problem I have myself is that uh, when, when uh, a, a chief of police comes out and say, this is ADF, in the capital of Kampala, and uh, going on uh, killing people, it worries even Ugandans. But also, I want to suggest it to viewers, and I think if I became a legislator... Maybe that's, that's a very important one. Yes. The ADF is alleged to be operating in the Congo. Yes. It has penetrated us to the capital. Yes. How it much worries. leverage do they have across the spectrum of the country yes. if it they worries, are doing um, operations in the capital? Yes. Peter, it worries so much, but that is not to say that the, the, the security forces of Uganda have not done their job. And as Morrison it said... It may actually be actually to say the word, that the statement was only political. The, the, it the wasn't word, actually a statement The word of fact. that was ringing in my mind as uh, you kept on asking uh, Morrison, that there are always remnants. There are always remnants who reassemble, retreat, and then re-strategize. Sometimes they make a comeback in those uh, 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 wanton killings here and there. And they want to make a statement and discredit. But the question but, is, uh, imam, why is it that imam, why is it, these people went out with a mission of fighting the government? Yes. Mm. Why are they particularly singling out a particular community? And you say that this is, community that is, is, is the, the best imam, the, 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 the best of the organization. That is the reason why we should give a benefit of doubt to the police chief. The problem we have as Ugandans is that we, 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 we tend to be experts on everything. And that's the point I was making, that if I was a legislator, I would probably propose a law that would be almost the replica of the subjudice rule. No discussion on any radio program or TV program <laughs> on issues <laughs> pertaining to security until the investigations are done. Maybe because you're a coward. what do we do? Maybe no, you're no, no. A coward. It's not being a coward. Because what do we do? We bring in a lot of theories, a lot of innuendos that sometimes excite the public and even mislead. By the time the people who are vested with the mandate to do the investigations, by the time they make a statement, by the time they come out, it is all being weighed and doubted. Mary, I love the way Mary, the Kwagalana group, uh, let me just finish this. Of course, uh, I love the way the Kwagalana group, yes, the way they, they did it. They the made a statement the put to task the police force to do their work. They gave the necessary support and they held it back. They no. never came in to make 
press conferences to challenge what the security people are well, doing. Well, the police were challenging themselves. <laughs> the police came and said it can't be an accident no, and it hits you at the, this the, level. The question and then the police me, decide was saying it is. Was but, that but perhaps Mary, you know some truth that we don't know. Yes, of course. Because, because they, they say, came out to challenge what uh, the, 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 the people, we are, Mary, we are what the security people are We are challenging saying. this blanket. If, if, for example, the IGP had come with arrests then report, uh -huh. then try or somewhere. It would make sense. But you don't, don't just wake up one morning and say, this is it. I am sure. Yes. I am certain. Yes. But, but Mary, yes. you see, I want to believe the police. I like Jeno Kaihura. But I believe that uh, he has never transited from the politician. Because a lot of the soldiers that we have in Uganda, officers as it were, are political actors. Because they are soldiers by conviction they are not professionals that have gone purely to serve a country they went to serve a cause and i appreciate that but they've never transited to become officers of state at that level they are still politicians so you have jeno kaihura that appreciates the pain of the people comes and says what do they say to these crying people and he gets into the mood of the mourners and it is not a job of the inspector general of police to come and mourn and cry Step away from the scene. Allow these to be these statements to be made by Mruli no, Mukasa, um, by uh, Aronda. Aronda. Unfortunately, is also a general. But allow them to be made by Aronda and Yakairima, and allow yourself opportunity to go and investigate. Uh -huh. When the Inspector General of Police makes these statements, I had General Muntu challenge him, saying, "At this particular occasion, you made this statement and said, you know, the people that killed X Y Z, you will arrest and prosecute. Have you?" And he listed about four different cases. Yes. And I'm thinking, wow, you've fallen into this trap. As the inspector general, he should allow himself to step back. No, but uh, you watched what was happening um, in Ferguson in the United States, the police that was making, uh, making statements. So I think... There so, are statements of facts no, no, and their hypothesis. No, because but, people but have confidence. People have confidence in the police. You should, you should, and the, the most important spokesperson, the most important spokesperson of any institution is the chief executive. For the sake of the police, <laughs> it is the Inspector General of Police. There is no better spokesperson for police than the Inspector General Until of Police. Until he arrives at a point and makes statements, but also, and they are deferred by his officers. Uh, but, but when also, you arrive in Mwenga and say, uh, I have an ambulance at every police station that should do this work, and your officers say, actually, we have one ambulance in the whole of Those Mwenga, are and officers. it was... <laughs> well, officers that are stating facts, but also may be I don't want but us to sit here mm. and doubt the professionalism of General Kale Kaihora. Is he has a lot of passion. Officer. He has a lot of passion. And uh, I don't I know don't about uh, he, the professional. He gets, rank, he gets he the job done. He can wake up one day, and he just makes a statement out of the blue. Me as a civilian, out of passion. I can make a statement out of passion, out of the blue, and I just mention it. But I don't want to equate myself to the person of General Kale Kaihura. Just Definitely, I believe by the time he utters a statement, he has full control of his faculties and he knows what he's saying. I'm saying. not doubting his faculties. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be that a different question. That is what question. you seem to be doing. Uh, no, I, I, yes. know, I know General Kaihura. I yes. know his passion. I know his gut. But that is where officers should not be. The job he's doing is not about emotion. If you want emotion, go to the church. If you want emotion, come to Rumbe and cry. The police chief of this country is not a chief mourner. But why do you say that he was That is emotional? why, Peter, because he let was. me just conclude. Because this. he was. That is why I move the legislators to actually come Let up with that law. The because you and make... I, we put him on pressure actually to say something. He shouldn't be. He should have the then nerves of the name. Him. Viewers, Tell I'm taking a break. When I return from the break, to, I'll to come with through. Charles Romshana. And some of these things, uh, of course, that are not being said uh, beyond us are, one, does the ADF actually still exist? I have had information around this table that uh, I think some of you have shared. We have camps of people, Ugandans, that are decamping from Uganda into the forests of the Congo. Where are they going? Do we have a rebel group that is operating there? Do we have a quasi-state within the forests of the Congo that people are going to? Is that state related to anything Islamic that the Imam Kasozis want not to say? And they are holding on it, and therefore Jeno Kaihura is nipping this bug and saying, we have a problem here. 
Why Don't go away. Why do people go to the forest?